It's the Daily Dog. Hey, y'all. Welcome back to the Daily Dog. I am thankful that you are hanging out with me today on a Masterpiece Friday edition of the show. Sadly, it is another somber edition of the show. We are going to be paying tribute to and remembering David Crosby in today's episode. David passed away this week, and y'all, I'm just gutted about it. Uh, this is another one. I mean, just a week ago, we were paying tribute to Jeff Beck. And uh, today, uh, it's David Crosby who has died. Uh, the singer, songwriter, guitarist, who was one of the most uh, influential musicians of the folk rock and rock and roll scene, especially starting in the mid-60s and through the 70s and even up to today. Uh, he died at the age of 81. Um, uh, famously, he was a founding member of the Birds uh, back in the mid-60s. He is also a founding member of one of the iconic supergroups in the history of popular music, Crosby, Stills, and Nash, and uh, occasionally with Neil Young in there as well. And, uh, you know, he was twice inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame as a member of the Birds and as a member of Crosby, Stills, and Nash. Uh, he uh, was a controversial figure. He's, uh, he often delved into uh, politics, political speech, and, and activism, but he always seemed to find a way to uh, communicate uh, what he thought and what he observed, and in my mind, that's a mark of a true artist. The thing that uh, always astounded me about uh, his musicianship was his ear and his vocal ability to fill in the gaps and make everybody around him better. His harmony parts were the hardest parts to sing, right? You can sing the melody, you can sing the high stuff, but it's that glue middle part that sometimes even when you do it extremely, extremely well, it almost disappears into the texture. And you're like, what even part is he singing? I know there's three of them, <laughs> right? It's an amazing, amazing ability. And, and we got to see it uh, firsthand. Megan and I, back in the day, got to see Crosby, Stills, Nash, and Young in concert in Philadelphia. That was in March of 2002. And it stands out all these years later as one of my favorite concert experiences that I've ever had, uh, truly. Uh, so today, I want to take a look through uh, three songs that... Uh, uh, David had a, a hand in, and and picking just three was hard, y'all, because I've been a fan of Crosby, Stills, and Nash for most of my life. And uh, so we're going to take a look first, though, at, at the start. We're going to look at Turn, Turn, Turn by The Birds. I mean, uh, what, what else are we going to do, right? It's perfect song for us to emote with uh, today. Uh, this song originally was a Pete Seeger tune, uh, which was first released in 1962, but it was adapted by the Birds in 1965 and became a number one hit for their band. The lyrics are largely adapted from the Bible. They're a paraphrase of uh, Ecclesiastes. Uh, and uh, on this recording, David played rhythm guitar and he sang harmony vocals. He also provided the vocal arrangement for their cover version. So I have found a live recording of this and uh, from back in the day. And so let's look at Turn, Turn, Turn by the Birds. Here we go. Absolutely. One of the classic, classic songs in the American Songbook. They're in D, right? And it's a simple folk song, right? A to D. Five chord, one chord. And they were able to make this from... Look at her go. They were able to take this from a great folk song and make it into kind of a folk rock song. There he is. I mean, it's 
the perfect lyrics to abide in while we're remembering him, right? To everything there is a season. We can't turn it back, right? song there's a time for everything there's always a time to listen to this song to just be reconnected to the human condition right a uh, wonderful original tune by Pete and and uh, David they're uh, singing with the rest of the guys <sighs> just classic absolutely a classic uh, tune I could not include that one uh, the next one I want to go to is Delta, and this one is from uh, Crosby, Stills & Nash's 1982 album, Daylight Again. And of course, that's the, you know, the album with Southern Cross on it uh, and, and lots of great songs. About this particular song, uh, here's what David Crosby said. He said, it's possible that this is the last song I ever wrote. Uh, I was in a pretty terrible state at the time. Uh, which you can tell from the song, it sounds lost. Jackson Brown came by the house where I was. I did not have a piano, so I just sang him what I had. And he said, wow, that's a really good one, David. You should uh, finish that. <laughs> and I was in the middle of a downhill slide involving free base cocaine, and I didn't especially want to go outside because I didn't want to bother with anything except taking more drugs. Uh, but Jackson really insisted and brought me to Warren Zevon's house where there was a piano and he sat me down at the piano and pulled this song out of me. Whenever I wanted to get up to go to the bathroom and take some more dope, he would say, no, 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 finish the song. And he kept me there until I did it. And now when we sing it, I thank Jackson for helping me to get it out. What a great friend. And um, I'm glad that Jackson uh, got on him because it's one of the most beautiful songs uh, that I can remember hearing. It's, it's really, really great. I have pulled a live recording from the early 80s. And here is Delta from Crosby, Stills, and Nash. Here we go. And don't forget, he's going to play the piano without a net. All right, so David's going to try to play the piano. Up a half step from where they were. That's in the last song, so that's E flat.
waking stream of consciousness on a sleeping beautiful chord Lands on the floor back to the one steers this riverboat. I think he's talking about himself. stops here on the Delta while they dance. Who's dancing? It's a song of regret. Uh, it's a song of unrealized opportunities, of unrealized potential, right? Maybe he's looking back on his life and he's not happy with the choices that he's made. He hasn't made good decisions. Maybe that's why he thinks of himself as the child, as immature. stops here on the delta. A delta signifies change, right? It signifies a fresh start. It's the end of one thing and the beginning of something else. I mean, even delta, we, we say, uh, what's the delta? What's the, what's the amount of change, right? It's time for a transformation. And at this time in his life, I think after this he got sober. Uh, and uh, it's it's a beautiful, beautiful song, introspective, and it, it just it still hits to this day. Um, so, yeah, Delta from Daylight again. We're gonna do one more, friends, and of course, of course, you're waiting for it. Uh, 
I have to include almost cut my hair. I mean, it's one of his one of his best. So this is originally from their second album, Deja Vu, which was released in 1970, and this one is written by David as well. I mean, what's a hippie to do in 1970? Uh, do you cut your hair? Uh, to better fit in with society's expectations and kind of be on the straight and narrow and be an, you know, an upstanding member of society? Or do you leave it long as a symbol of your rebellion to what's going on in the status quo? We shall see. Uh, so this is a recording from the 25th anniversary of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. It was a special concert giving, uh, given in New York City, and the guys are a bit older, but they still sound great. So here is Almost Cut My Hair. Off we go. keep going back to A as the tonic, so if I said D mixolydian, this should probably be A, right? That would make it A Dorian. Think about it, A Dorian and D mixolydian woo, have the same uh, notes in them, right? They just end on a different pitch. I should have brought my keyboard out to play along with it. <laughs> I'll do that later. Not when I'm with y'all. Damn the man, David. When I finally get my shit together. You can do it. Hmm. Gonna get down in some of that sweet southern weather. He's got such control of his intonation. He's got a very narrow vibrato uh, pattern which makes him an excellent harmony singer, too. I owe it to someone. You owe it to yourself. Hmm. 
amazing career. Longevity upon longevity. It's what happens when you write songs that are that good, Thank you so that very never much. go out of style. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, man. Y'all. I'm just sad about this. I am. It's, 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 it's hard to talk about. Uh, David lent his talents to so many recordings uh, over the years. He worked with some of the best musicians in the industry. Off the top of my head, I wrote down uh, Jackson Brown, Grace Slick, James Taylor, Art Garfunkel, Elton John, Carol King, uh, Phil Collins, David Gilmore, John Mayer. The list goes on and on and on. Mark Cohn, I've heard him uh, singing with Mark before. Uh, and he just always made anybody he was playing with sound better. So he, he everybody wanted to work with him, you know? Um, wonderful stuff. Uh, as I was getting ready to... Uh, uh, to record this, I found a quote from Graham, from Graham Nash, about uh, about David's death. And this is what Graham has said publicly. Uh, he says, It is with deep and profound sadness that I learned that my friend David Crosby has passed. I know people tend to focus on how volatile our relationship has been at times, but what has always mattered to David and me more than anything was the pure joy of the music we created together, the sound we discovered with one another, and the deep friendship we shared over these many long years. Um, I can only imagine what Graham is feeling, uh, what Stephen is feeling, what uh, what all of us, you know, uh, that have worked with him are feeling, but all of the fans are feeling it too. And it's just a sad day to lose someone that we've been listening to in our cars, from our turntables, on our CD decks, at parties, at, at funerals, <laughs> at weddings, uh, whenever, for most of the last 50, 60 years. And uh, it's, it's heartbreaking. But uh, to every season you know there, there is a time and and it was david's time and we pay tribute uh to david and we raise our glass to him and we say thank you for for the work and for uh the the music that uh, that endures your legacy is secure david so rest in peace david crosby thank you all for hanging out with me today a somber friday but nevertheless a masterpiece friday uh, we will come back next week with more episodes, and I hope that you will join me for those. But that is all for today. I thank you all for joining me, and we will see you next time on another edition of The Daily Doug. <laughs>